Alright guys, Stephen here and what I want to go through with you today is YAML or yet another markup language or depending on where you're reading the acronym, um, YAML ain't markup language. Now whichever way you refer it or whatever acronym, acronym that you use, it refers to the same thing. So YAML is a data serialization language. And very early on, as I started looking into network automation tools such as Ansible and Nornia, you discover that these tools are used, or these files rather, are used very, very extensively. Okay, and they provide um, these tools with the necessary information and a structure um, that they understand in order to do the work that they carry out. So Ansible will use an inventory. .yaml file. Nornia uses multiple YAML files to describe groups of devices, individual devices, um, defaults, configurations. So they're used regularly um, by these tools and therefore it's important that you understand how to read them, how to write them, what Python's doing with them in the background and then when you add on the ability to then write your own YAML files and use them to construct things like Jinja templates, it becomes clear that having a little bit of understanding of these files and or the format and being able to write them is going to serve many purposes to you, okay? It won't be time wasted, okay? Now, in order to give a focal point to what I'm talking about here, we've got this topology. Um, the specific configurations on these devices don't matter. In fact, there aren't any at the moment. Um, all that's on these devices is SSH access and an IP address for reachability. Um, however, the devices aren't even started at the moment. They're not even switched on because all I need to do is really highlight what I'm talking about here. So we've got this topology, all of these devices ultimately belong to the same superset, okay? They all belong to the overall topology, but we've then got individual subsets at core, distribution and access layer, and there might be some services at the subset level that aren't shared with other subsets. So core and distribution will typically be running routing protocols. Your access layer might not be. So there are differences at that level. There are differences at individual device level. So if we look at the access layer, we can see that there's five switches there. Each of those five switches will require its own IP address and its own host name um, that don't apply to any other device, either at subset or superset level, okay? And we need a way of storing all these characteristics about our devices in a central location for reasons that will become clear later. But first of all, let's look at how YAML files are structured, okay? So in order to do this, to make things simpler at first, I've got a YAML file that ultimately describes me, okay? Now, the first thing to note when you are looking at YAML is that syntax and white spacing is very, very, very important, <laughs> okay? Um, so, be very mindful as you start to write these that one extra space somewhere or the wrong number of spaces can have pretty profound effects on your how your YAML file is interpreted by either tools like Nornir or if you're calling it into a Python script, how Python interprets it is very dependent upon the correct white spacing being used. But ultimately, when you are looking at it, depending on, well, I'm using PyCharm here and conveniently Python, PyCharm does a little bit of work for me. So I can see here in orange, I've got the word Stephen. Now, orange is the Py, uh, PyCharm syntactical highlighting, okay, taking effect. And immediately we can see after that that we've got a colon right after Stephen. Now, the order, <laughs> Stephen's not highlighted for no reason. It's highlighted because in YAML format, Anything that is to the immediate left of a colon is a key. Anything that appears right of a colon is a value. Now that's familiar terminology if you've used Python. We know that dictionaries um, contain a series of key value pairs um, and ultimately that kind of terminology and that kind of structure is reflected in YAML. So it starts to become clear very early on what YAML is actually doing. Okay, now we don't in this case have anything to the immediate right of the 
of Stephen, or to the immediate right of the colon after Stephen, to be more specific. However, we do have entries below it, and you'll notice that there is a white space here, okay? So anything that exists at the same level, I don't know if you can see that on your screens, but you see that there is a line that runs down here, okay? That is known as a level, okay? So to be specific, Stephen is a key, okay? Because it appears to the left of a colon, but more specifically, it's actually a top level key because it's at the outermost level that we can go. Okay, so I can't go any further to the left with this. So Stephen represents a top level key. Now here, if you can see it, there is a line that runs kind of up through the F in family, the H in height, A in age, and the F in full name. Okay, and to the immediate left of that line, we've got white spacing. That white spacing uh, represents a level. So we've taken a step down. So full name, yes, it is a first level key, okay? And it has a value of Stephen Jones, but because it's indented a level, full name is not only a key to the value of Stephen Jones, but full name is a value to the key of Stephen. And the same goes for age. So age is a key which has a value of 32, but due to it being below and indented a level, it is not only a key with a value of 32, it is also a value to the key of Stephen. Okay, now as we move down, we can see this become more apparent. So we've got here family, okay? Now it's down a level, uh, below Stephen, and it's indented by a level. Uh, so we know that ultimately family is a value to the key of Stephen, okay? But we don't see anything to the immediate right of the colon. But down a level and indented again, we can see things like sibling, mum and dad. And the same rules just apply. So here we've got a top level key of Stephen, okay? It has a value of family. Family is also a key. And below it, we've got values of siblings, mum and dad. Now, as well as being a value, siblings being a value to the key of Stephen, it is also a key which has a value Louise. Okay. Now, we know in Python that what we can do is we can construct nested dictionaries and dictionaries can have keys which have values and those values can be other keys and this is just the YAML repre representation of this, okay? And once you start to look at it, as long as you're clear in the way that you type, uh, write it and the white space that you're using, you'll quickly be able to look at it and understand the hierarchy, the structure, and that means that you'll quickly understand what's going on when you look at your scripts, okay? Now, just like in Python again, where we can have a dictionary which has a key that has values, a value that is a list, okay? We can represent that in YAML as well. So again, to start from the top, we've got the top level key is Stephen, it has values of full name, age, height, family. Siblings is not a value to the key of Stephen because it's indented by one level too many. Siblings is a value to the key of family. But city, that is a key, a value to the key of Stephen. And then we get to likes. Okay. Now again, there's nothing to the immediate right of the colon that appears after likes. So we know likes is a key, but it has values that re are equivalent to these entries. Now, when you see or when you write a dash immediately before an entry in a YAML file like this, Python, when it sees it, it knows that we've got a key here called likes. And this dash tells Python that it's working with a list. Okay, so... Again, Stephen is a top level key. You move into it, we've got values of full name, age, height, family, city, likes. Likes has a number of values. That value happens to be a list containing multiple entries. 
and those entries are Cisco, football and so on and so forth. Now, at the same level as likes, we've got dislikes and the same rules apply here, okay? We can see that down a level and indented, we've got a series of entries preceded by a dash, so we know that every entry below that is a list entry and that overall list, which is that, is the value of the dislikes key, okay? Now, this all sounds a lot more difficult than it actually is. Um, I get that, okay? So what is um, what helped me was to actually just write this in Python syntax um, and see that it is exactly the same whether you use YAML and import the file through Python or whether you hard code all of this into a Python script. The net result is exactly the same, okay? So what I done was I wrote uh, this, okay, so we can see here, Stephen, top level key, okay, so think on this as your variable name, okay, Stephen is a top level key, and there we've got keys called, or values rather, called full name, age, family, city, likes, so inside here, there's your keys, okay, but they are also values to Stephen, okay, and when you get to likes, We've got a key called likes, its value is a list. And then we've got a key called dislikes and its value is a list. And the entries are exactly the same. So we can see that um, dislikes, winter mushroom, onions, angry people and rudeness. Winter mushrooms, onions, angry people and rudeness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this. Specifically, I'm going to pretty print it so that it looks nice and coherent and it's not just a chunk of text. Um, but we'll see how it looks uh, structurally, okay? So we'll run this. Okay, there we go. So we can see it's not printed, okay? Stephen, because if Stephen is ultimately the variable name, okay? But we can see that all the same values are there. Now, don't be thrown off by the fact that first here uh, appear appears full name and first here is age. Because I've used pretty print, it has reassembled this in alphabetical order. All the same values are there, all the same keys are there. We can see that likes still has a value, which is a list. That list has the same entries as appears over here. So Cisco, music, football, lasagna, summer. You can see Cisco, music, football, lasagna, summer. Everything else is the same there, okay? What I've then done next is I've written a Python, I would hesitate to call it script because it doesn't really do much, but I've ultimately written this, which will call this YAML file in, okay, and and do the same thing, it'll just print the value of it. Now you are going to notice differences because in here, Stephen is a key, but in here, it's a variable name. When I run it from here, okay, it doesn't print the variable name, okay, because I've called it and specifically told it to print Stephen, okay. Whereas when I run this, it is going to print everything that's in here, and it just so happens, or it's not just so happened, Stephen is the top level key here rather than being the variable name in here. So it will print Stephen when I run this, okay. But we'll see that other than that, the net result is exactly the same, okay. Okay, so there we can see Stephen, age 32, cities there, dislikes is a list with winter, mushrooms, onions, angry people, rudeness. Um, I've got family, my dad, Stephen, mum, Christine, siblings, Louise, full name, Stephen Jones, it isn't really. Height, likes is a list, again, Cisco, football, lasagna, music, summer, so on and so forth. Okay, so the net result is the same, but ultimately, what's the difference between this and this? It's not that apparent here, but it becomes more apparent when you deal with something like this, okay? So let's have a look at the, the, the YAML file that I've got to describe this, okay? Now, this is a YAML file that corresponds with this topology, okay? It is a YAML file that I use um, to render in order to render ginger templates, 
Okay, so if I want to quickly run uh, a lab that has a basic EIGRP setup, okay, I can use this this YAML file to render, render a ginger template that will create a device by device specific configuration um, and I can then send that configuration to, a uh, to all those devices quickly and we will cover that off in later videos okay so there are a number of things in here that need to be stored or that I want to be sending in a configuration template okay so I've got the let's take core one for example okay I've got host name core one okay so the host name will be sent but if we look here I've got interfaces gig zero zero gig zero one gig zero two well if we go to uh Core one, we can see gig zero zero, gig zero one, gig zero two, gig zero three is plugged in here, but it's not in the YAML file because gig zero three is the interface that I use to bridge this device to my to my host. Okay, for the purposes of uh, reachability, um, but we can see gig zero one, gig zero two, gig zero zero, and in here we've got the characteristics of gig zero zero, gig zero one, gig zero two. Okay, so all of these are trunks, so that's denoted. We've got allowed VLANs, that's denoted. But that's besides the point here, okay? The point I'm trying to make here is that even with basic synth, uh, basic configurations and a small number of devices, you still get to the point where your YAML file is pretty hefty, okay? So it gets to, I reckon it's going to be over 200 lines of, yeah, it's close to 300 okay go call it 250 okay lines in a yaml file now in exactly the same way that i took this yaml file and i could hard code its value and its structure into a python script a bit like this i could do this i could take these values or these details and i could configure them into or i could hard code them rather into a a Python script and that would look something like this okay now besides being not particularly good to look at uh, there are glaring issues when you do something like this okay so part of this or part of what might be stored here might be for example a management IP address okay or it might be for example we've got allowed VLANs okay so Let's say, for example, you've got scripts and they're hard coded in this manner. So you've got a, all of your scripts and they've got entries for core one and an entry for core two and an entry for distro uh, one and two. And you come in here and you see, okay, well, on distro one, I've got a trunk link set up on gig zero one and these are the allowed VLANs. Let's say, for example, you come in and you suddenly you add a vegan okay if you want all your scripts to be exactly representative or you want them to be uh, resilient to change you would have to go in and manually change each individual script to make sure that the configurations and the characteristics of the device were actually an accurate representation of the devices at any given moment okay so you make one tiny change let's say for example you change the management ip address of one of your devices and you've got 50 scripts where this device characteristics are hard coded into it you need to go through 50 scripts and change that management ip address or your script is not going to run or it's going to have undesired effects when you do it this way not only is it a lot neater okay you simply have one point of change. So I want to go in here and I want to add VLAN 80 onto uh, the trunk link with gig zero zero on core one. Not a problem. I change it in one place. All my scripts then call that in. It means that all my scripts run with that change uh, in effect. Okay. There is also the issue with if you uh, if you leave scripts behind or you move on and somebody um, opens up a script that you've written and you've got this hard coded into your into your scripts and that script doesn't work the way that they want it to what's their chances of being able to identify why that script's not working the way they want it to probably slim to none okay now what i'm going to do here is just to prove the point again that 
hard coding this and then printing hard coding it into uh, Python rather yields the same result as calling it the YAML file in. I've written a little loop here at the bottom that is, I've created a list that says all devices, all the devices are within that list and I'm going to say for device in all devices print the content of device so it will go through core one, print the content of core one and so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll look at that first of all. Okay, so there we can see it. Okay, so let's pick distro one. Okay, so we can see distro one has got interfaces gig zero zero, gig zero one, gig zero two, gig zero three, distro one. Gig zero zero, gig zero one, gig zero two, gig zero three, and so on and so forth. All the same VLANs are allowed. 1, 10, 20, 30, 40. You can see it all. Okay, it's an exact representation of this. It almost looks exactly the same, but we're missing this. We're not printing the the variable name. Okay. If we go in here again, just to talk through this, what I've done is I've imported YAML because we're going to be working with YAML files. We say I'm going to import preprint as well so I can print it in a kind of aesthetically pleasing manner. But to open the YAML file, all I'm going to do is say with open, okay? You then open brackets. I specify R here. It tells Python that I'm going to put in a raw string, okay? Because things like backslash U in Python have a special meaning and it can sometimes confuse Python when it sees this in a file path when you want it to be going to backslash users Python sees this and that has essentially a special meaning so if you say use an R here it says to Python I'm giving you a raw string of text okay um, Python ignores the backslash U or the backslash S okay we then specify the path all the way to the YAML file put a comma quote unquote R tells Python that we're only going to open this YAML file as read only. We don't need to be changing it. We just want to read the contents of it. And then we temporarily put that in to a variable called YAML underscore topology. That's arbitrary. You can pick whatever you want. Okay, I've score, you've chosen YAML underscore topology because it's kind of relevant to what we're doing and easy to read. Um, we then create another variable. Okay, now that variable is the result of taking the YAML module, running dot load method on it. We then specify the file, okay, which is up here. YAML underscore topology represents this. So we're saying to Python, use the load method of the YAML uh, library to open YAML topology and use this loader, okay. And once that's all said and done, once the file's open in memory it's going to be in a variable called YAML data and down here we're going to print YAML data okay and we'll see that the net result is the same okay there we go now all the same information is, is there it's all readily available for you to call in your script so you can say um, okay at this particular device uh, part of my script, I want to uh, access the host name of access1 and you do that exactly the same way you would if you had it hard coded in somewhere like this. It's no different, okay? It's all still as readily available, but you don't have any worries about having things hard coded into scripts and scripts not being completely up to date because as long as your t uh, YAML file is completely accurate, Every file that uses it is going to be working off the best information. This is known as a source of truth, okay, in um, network automation parlance, and that becomes prevalent when you start looking at things like GitHub and so on and so forth. Um, you'll find that having sources of truth um, is of huge benefit to you. Best advice on this front, though, would be just to write it. Start off small, um, learn it, look at it, understand it, and then as you build up labs, try just writing them, even if you're not going to use the tools, at least just try writing them, writing YAML files that describe it, uh, call it into Python, print it, see if you get the results that you expect, and eventually, um, after two or three tries, 
this will become second nature to you and you'll immediately be able to look at a YAML file and understand what is going on. And next, what we're going to look at is taking this information and using it to create device bespoke configurations that we can then send to devices. All right, thanks.